Hi. Uh, I've been making around right about a dozen films now, or close to it, and uh, would like to self-promote myself and uh, say if you're interested in what I'm saying, there's a my book here that is on, available on Amazon UK and I think I think around the world, I'm not so sure, but I'm pretty sure you can get them on Amazon. Uh, and also on eBay. I've written two books now. I'm dyslexic and I have terrible trouble writing, but I'm with a very good friend of mine. This is my second book. And, uh, and this book, Keeping the Mind of a Child, to me, complements the first book. The first book tells you about uh, how I got into Aikido. It, it's the only book I believe in the world that has been critical enough to talk about the weaknesses within the techniques. It doesn't matter what style you do, I've seen dozens and dozens of styles, dozens and teachers, and if I say to you Ikkyo, you, you'll all know what an Ikkyo is. If I say a Nikkyo, you'll all know what it is. A Kodagaish, a Shianagi. You see, these are words of techniques and the technique pretty much is the same, whether it's done in Iwama, the Hongu Dojo, anywhere in the world. These techniques are pretty standard but they have flaws in them. Some of the flaws are due to the human being doing the technique and they don't see the, the gaps and the problems and the angles. And so the first book, I've taken the trouble to take the most popular techniques and just to explain where the weaknesses are and to tr give you my opinion of how to strengthen that technique. If your uke is flowing and blending with you, that's not a real attack. They're having fun enjoying Aikido and you're having fun doing Aikido. But the technique may or may not work out there in the street where it is called a martial art and we should consider that. A lot of people, they say, oh, I don't do Aikido for that. I do it for the spiritual side. These people are usually very gentle people, lovely people to meet and to talk to, but they're not doing O Senses Art. O Senses Art was a very rigorous training, hard training. When I trained in Iwama, I couldn't believe how hard the tatami was. I've never trained on such a hard floor before. I thought that concrete may even be softer. And these people trained there for years and years on this powerfully firm Japanese traditional tatami. Absolutely no give whatsoever. No wonder there's so many Japanese with broken bodies now. These masters are teaching but when they take their gi off and that, you see them all strapped up or in a bad way. So the first book, I believe, is the first one to point out the weakness in other styles and the things that I've come to learn that are important. And I've tried to put O Sense's understanding into why I'm explaining the techniques the way I do. If you held, if I was holding here a piece of string from end to end, then it would be continuous. Pretty obvious, isn't it? The problem is, when we do, let's say, Kodagash, and we throw our uke, the moment from applying the pressure on the wrist 
and them taking off and going through the air, there's a moment in time where Nage doesn't quite catch up with Uka. There's a small space. And most of you who would have been having fun with another per partner of yours, either after class, while class was on doing Kotegaishis, you may have come across the UK who decides that they're really good at Ukemi and they're faster than you. And before you've got to the pin, they're up looking at you smiling. They've outspeeded you. It's because the string wasn't continuous. So in this first book, I've taken the trouble to try to show you that you go from the hand and you slide down the forearm and you have to do this while they're in the air and you have to be 100% with them. There's a person that I respect greatly, Eckhart Tolle, he's written quite He's written some books now and some CDs. You can listen to him. He says, one of the books, The Power of Now, being in the moment, being in that precise millisecond, so there's no gap. The string is not slack at all. There's no dip. It's a taut string. That's how you and your partner has to be from the moment they arrive in front of you to the moment you decide it needs to end. In a Dakota Geish, that would be by pinning them on the floor. Either you in a standing pin or a kneeling pin. Only you release them. They cannot outspeed you because you're with them. So there's no such thing as outspeeding you. If they're doing 50, then you're doing 50. If they're doing 80, you're doing 80. So that's the first book. So I hope perhaps you'll purchase it. It's not on Kindle, I'm afraid, that one. It's only hardback. My second book, I try to talk about the spiritual side of my life and all the suggestions that I can help uh, by passing on to yourself on how to become a better person, what you have what, in my opinion, you have to do, how you, how you look at yourself. There's one that jumps to mind. I call it the, the driver in front. How many of you are driving a vehicle, complaining about the person in front of you on the motorway, how bad their driving is? Why don't they get over? It could be on a small street. Can they hear you, the driver in front? No. So why bother to do it? Does it make you feel any better? Not usually. It normally makes you even wilder. Until you come across, across the next person driving, not to your liking. Life's full of these happenings, but the driver in front is one that I think most of the, the world appears to be in common with, and so you'll know what I mean. If you was on a side road, where you could perhaps pull up behind them or pull up so alongside them and tell, tell them about their driving, most people wouldn't do this anyhow. So why do it sitting in your car? Wouldn't there be better things to think about? You know, think about going on holiday, think about your Aikido techniques, think about anything that's important to you. To me, this is becoming a better person, not wasting your time on things that they can't hear. You know, you are the driver in front of somebody else and they're saying and thinking the same things about you. Or do you think you're the perfect driver, the same as the, the perfect Kota Gaish practitioner? Please think hard about these thoughts, because I think you'll find that we all have the same problems. And my second book goes into meditation, yoga, tai chi, aikido, and life. 
and it gives you many, many ways of looking at it. I have several people who have written to me saying they're going to have to read it again because it so speaks about themselves and the way they look at life. I had one person say, Oh dear, I hope it's not too late to start changing. I've been the person that you're talking about and you were so brave to say the things you did because most people wouldn't want things to be said like that. So, there's my promotion for my books, but I hope my words have, have run true to how you would think and not just to buy my books for that reason. I'm hoping you will find benefit by them and it will allow you to grow more in, as a spiritual path because you are the spiritual path. You don't have to become a Buddhist monk to walk a spiritual path. You just have to become a better person. And by becoming a better person, you'll become a better Aikidoka. You will see the gaps and you will become more precise. I hope you've enjoyed this section and again please like it or subscribe if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts and continue with me on this journey. Thank you.